Spotlight is one of the most powerful tools built into iPadOS. For those that aren't aware, Spotlight is the universal search bar built into the iPhone, iPad, and Mac. There are a ton of hidden features built into it and I wanna cover them here. This video is sponsored by UPDF, let's get into it. Like I mentioned, Spotlight is the search feature built into the iPhone, iPad, and Mac. This can be used to search for local files, open apps, or even search the web. There is a ton you can do with it. Now, launching apps is probably the most common task that is used with Spotlight. On the home screen, you can swipe down to bring up Spotlight. Right off the bat, you will see some app suggestions and maybe even some contacts or shortcuts. These are Siri suggestions, and the system learns from what apps and actions you use to suggest these items. This can be based on frequency, time of day, location, and more. If you don't see what you want, you can just start typing in the search bar. Spotlight itself is a local service, so it has access to what is on that device, and it is fast. While in an app or on a home screen or even on the lock screen, you can hit command space on the hardware keyboard to bring up Spotlight. This makes Spotlight accessible from anywhere in the OS. You can launch an app or use any of the other stuff we're going to talk about in just a bit. If you don't have a hardware keyboard attached while you are in an app, bring down Notification Center and swipe down on the screen to launch Spotlight. Now you can add apps to multitasking with Spotlight. Just search the name of the app and drag the app icon to add it. If you're using Stage Manager, the app will appear and it'll be added as a window in that stage. If you're using Split View, you can add an app to either the left or the right side. You can also add an app to slide over as well. You will see the window size change depending on where it will go. File search is probably the other feature that is really popular with Spotlight. You can search for files both locally and in the iCloud Drive folder. This is how I mainly open up documents. Browsing folders is just so 2003. Doing web searches is also possible with Spotlight. You can search for something like F1 race results and it'll use your default search engine to open up the browser and show you those results. When searching for things like sports scores, movies, a band, and more, you will see rich results. This will have the requested information right inside Spotlight so you don't have to go to Safari or a web browser. With Spotlight, you can search for contents within an app as well. Messages and mail are two options I use a lot, especially email. If I have to find an old message from a specific sender or the subject or the contents of the mail, I just type it in here and it'll show up in Spotlight. If you need to expand and see even more options, you can select the search in app option. This will bring up the built in search tool in the app and give you a more detailed search. Usually if I need to call, FaceTime, or message somebody, I'll just type their name right into Spotlight and then select that option from their contact list. To me, this is a much quicker way of sending a message or calling somebody. Locations are another search result you can get in Spotlight. Now this isn't something I do a lot on my iPad, but I do use this a lot on my iPhone. You can quickly type in a gas station or a restaurant or dry cleaners or whatever, and it'll bring up options around you. Notes and Freeform are another app that you can pull up contents from those apps right from Spotlight. You can not only search for the names of these documents, but you can also sp search for specific words or phrases that are in those notes. Specific settings pages, for example, like Wi-Fi or accessibility can be opened up right from Spotlight. I use this a lot with the passwords page for iCloud. You can also toggle settings right from Spotlight, stuff like Bluetooth, airplane mode, cellular, and more. This video is sponsored by UPDF. UPDF is a comprehensive PDF solution with AI tools built into it. UPDF is incredibly easy to use. With UPDF, you can edit PDF documents. This includes adding text, images, links, and it will keep the original formatting of the document completely. With this app, you can scan documents right into it, add your signature, and then send them off. You can also annotate documents as well. There are over a hundred different stickers and stamps that you can use to highlight different parts of your document or mark it up. When scanning a document, you can OCR it. This will make that PDF not only searchable, but editable as well. Select text under the page image so that you can share the document with colleagues or classmates, and that way the document won't be changed, but still searchable. The big feature of UPDF is its AI tools. You can use this to summarize large documents, write new content, and even translate. 
This is killer. Other features include the ability to compress, sign, read, and fill out forms. The thing I found the most impressive about this app is how quickly it was to just pick up and understand where all the features were. The UI itself is very clear. UPDF is on all of your Apple devices, Mac, iPhone, and of course the iPad. UPDF is incredibly affordable. I'm gonna put a link in the description below to where you can go check it out. Use my link and you can save 63%. My thanks to UPDF for sponsoring this video. With Spotlight, you can search for photos. Just like in the Photos app, you can search for things like mountains, dog, pizza, whatever. Photos indexes all of your items on device, and then it'll pull out what you know it sees in those photos. So like I said, it'll pull out mountains. It can pull out a bike or a car or something like that. If you have photos with text in them, live text will index those photos, meaning you can search for the text in a photo and that photo will show up. And of course, third-party apps can hook up with Spotlight as well. Apps like Drafts do a great job of you being able to search for the content inside those apps right from Spotlight. One of my favorite parts of Spotlight is being able to run shortcuts from it. This is something I do all day long. Now, I made a video about all the shortcuts I use. I'll put a link to it in the description below. I'm not gonna rehash them all here. Now, there used to be a really nasty bug associated with this feature that basically wouldn't allow you to type in the a text box for a shortcut if you had Spotlight still open in the background. That has been fixed in iPadOS 17. You don't have to worry about it anymore. I run complex shortcuts like my snippet cut right from Spotlight. And then I also run simple ones from Spotlight like my headphones shortcuts. Combining shortcuts and Spotlight together is kind of like making personal extensions for the OS. You can build features and quick actions that you need to get done. You can start playing music right from Spotlight as well. Just search for an album or a playlist and hit play. While this is nice, I don't often get the results I want, so I usually just end up opening the music app. Shazam is built right into iOS and iPadOS now. You can type recognize music and this will trigger Shazam to figure out what song is playing right from Spotlight. Despite what people say, iPadOS actually does have a calculator and it's Spotlight. Spotlight has a built-in calculator to it. You can do simple and short calculations or complex calculations in it as well. Now, it's no scientific calculator, but if you are needing a scientific calculator, you're probably already using pCalc or something like that. This is great if I just need to add some stuff together, you know, get some totals, divide some stuff, multiply, whatever. I use this all day long. It even understands order of operations if you're doing a multi-step calculation. You can also do measurement conversions as well, such as grams to ounces, meters to feet, liters to quarts, and more. If you use the built-in calendar app, I'm sure you're aware there is no natural language input for that. But from Spotlight, you can do natural language input for calendar events. Kind of weird that they included it in Spotlight, but it's not built into the app. Not, not really sure what's going on there. So what you can do is you can just type in your appointment, date, and time, and there will be an add button so you can create a calendar event right from Spotlight. Now what's great about this is the way Calendar Sync, if you use a third-party calendar app, you could still use this feature, and with Calendar Syncing you know, in the background, you'll get those calendar appointments on the third-party app as well. In Spotlight, you can set timers and alarms. For a timer, type set timer and then pick how long you want it to be. The timer will start from there. For an alarm, type add alarm, then you can add your alarm. Now, neither of these are revolutionary, but they're just really nice to have so that you can just type right from Spotlight anywhere in the OS. Again, that's the key to Spotlight is you can get to it anywhere in the OS. If you have apps open or whatever, that way you can stay focused on what you're doing and you're not jumping into other apps. If you have a document you want to scan, you can type scan document into Spotlight and this will launch the native document scanner in files. From there, you can scan the document and save it into files. By typing the name of a focus, you can toggle it right from Spotlight. Personally, I like my mode cut shortcut because I have a bunch of other actions and shortcuts that get triggered along with it. But if you want to quickly toggle your meeting focus or your sleep focus or whatever, you can do this right from Spotlight. So those are my tips and tricks for using Spotlight. Now, most of these do carry over to the iPhone and the Mac, so be sure to try them out on your different devices. I wanna hear from you all. What is your favorite tip for using Spotlight in the comments below? 
My thanks to UPDF for sponsoring this video. If you liked the video, hit the thumbs up button, subscribe if you haven't already, and have a great day.